As we continue with the hashtag. The hash. Roar the cost of the living. I want to encourage two people, three people. That even in the midst of the dry season. You can still survive. Even in the times of drought, the times of uh, dryness, you can still survive because our Lord is awesome God. He's powerful God and he's a great God. Amen. And uh, I want us to look at a story in the Bible, in the book of First King. Uh, I want us to learn to steal something or to learn something from First King chapter 17 verses 2 to 4. And I want us to see how uh, this great man of God by the name Elijah was able to survive in the dry season. I know that right now the, commodities, the, com the food commodities are too high, the traveling is too high, the cost of living is too high, but we don't, we don't work with the seasons, we don't work with the economy of the world. We can still survive even in the midst of crisis, the midst of dryness, the midst of pain, the midst of lack. We can still survive. Because our Lord is able. Are you there in the book of First Kings chapter 17? I'm reading verses 2 and verses 4. And this is the, the word of God. I want, to, I want to read two versions. But the version that we have in the screen is the NIV. But I want to do the comparison of the two versions. The King James Version and the NIV so that we can pick four things in that package and then I'm going to finish. I'm going to use less than 10 minutes or 15 and then I'm going to be done in Jesus' mighty name. Let me begin with the, uh, with the New King James Version. Then uh, the media team is going to display the NIV version that we have uh, with us tonight. The Bible says, Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Get away from here and turn to eastward and hide by the brook of Cherith, which flow into Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook. <laughs> I love this word. You know the word brook means uh, it, is, it, is the, it is the boiling, it is like the boiling of water, the, the the, the, the chemi chemi, the fountains of the water that is boiling from the ground or the water that has been preserved. Zamani, I remember when uh, we were a small boy in our home village, there were so many rivers because uh, our home was not far away from the forest. And sometimes when we come across the dry season, we could go to, the, to the, those seasonal rivers and find some waters in the brook. To, to nasema, can you go in? And that water was too cold because it is under the tree and it is on something like a, like, a, like a pot. And it was too cold. And now the Lord is speaking to, Jere, uh, to Elijah. And he's saying to Elijah. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook. The water that comes from the brook. It has two ingredients. One, it is very clean. And number two, it is very cold. And number three, it is refreshing. And the Bible says, and I will command the lavender to feed you there. And now, I want to, to do the comparison with the new NIV. Then uh, NIV says, Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Live here, turn eastward, and hide in the Kerith, Labin. There, there, are two, <clears throat> there are two words that have been used in that package that are, are different. The New King James Version is talking about the brooks in Cherith. And the NIV is talking about the Kerith. And uh, we're going to focus on that uh, in the New King James Version. And he said, in the east side of Jordan, you will drink from the brook. And I have directed. You know, the word directed means it is an order. Nima. The Lord was, had already given the direction to the Levens to, to supply the food there. And uh, there are four things that I want us to run from that package, how we can be able to survive in the dry season. Number one, stay in the word of God. Now, the Lord is speaking to, remember, 
uh, Peter, in that season, it was the time when Elijah has declared there will be no rain for three and a half years. And in that season, the message went to one queen. And by the to the Queen Sheba. And he sent a message to three Elijah that I'm going to kill you. And Elijah was full of fear because of his Emma, how can I stay here and be, if, if I have killed the thousands of the prophet of Baal, I cannot sit down and be killed by a woman. And now Elijah is running to go and hide. And in the same, same season, there is a famine, there is a jar that is going on in the land of Egypt. So in other words, Elijah has made a declaration, there is no rain, but in the same, same manner, he cannot survive in that season. So he needs to get somewhere, he needs to go somewhere, he needs to get something that can help him survive for three and a half years. You know, there's some prophecy that comes with the consequences. Now, the Lord, in verses 2, the Bible says, and the word of the Lord came to him. The word of the Lord came to him. Now, after the, the, the season of the famine, after the season of the, of the dryness, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Now, Elijah is not surviving by the power or the anointing that is in him, but he's operating by the word of the Lord. And when we come in such a season in life, we need to stay in the word of God. Because a writer was able to hear the word of God and a writer was able to obey and follow the word of God. Hallelujah. And many of the time that we miss uh, God in this dry season because we fail to hear, we fail to listen, we fail to obey, we fail to follow the word of the Lord. But the Bible says a writer stayed in the word. The Lord says, this is my word to you. Get out of this place and go to eastwards. But Elijah did not argue with God. So where, how do I survive? But he followed the word of God. He did as the word of God says. He, 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 was, a, he was quickened to do as the word of God said. Number two. The second thing that we need to do to survive in the dry season. I say number one, it is to stay the word of God. Number two. It is to stay faithful. Nikuka tukiwa minifu. But as the Bible says, get away and uh, get away from here and turn to eastward and hide. Now, the Lord is telling him, get out of here, leave this place, go to eastern side and hide to the Kerith. The Kerith was a place, it was, it was a certain cave and God said to him, and a panel of the And number one, what a writer did, he stayed faithful to the word of God. I said on Sunday when God spoke to, to Ibrahim and said to Ibrahim, read this, read your people, read this prayer and go to a prayer that I'm going to send you. The Lord did not give Ibrahim the prayer to go. He didn't give him the direction. Lakini mungu alimuambia, talk and I went to a prayer that I'm going to send you. And because he was faithful, to the word of God. He was able to follow God. He was able to follow the mind of God. He was able to follow the word of God. Because when God says he is faithful to follow and accomplish his word to the end. If God says he will go, he's going to bless you. He is not like a man who rises or slander. God is faithful to follow his word. And now he's saying to Elijah, live here and turn And in that prayer, the Bible says, I am going to provide for you. And the writer was faithful to the word of God. Praise the Lord. And number three. Number three. For you to be able to overcome in the season of dryness, you need to stay calm. Elijah rested in the truth of the word of God. And I want, to, I want to tell you this. There comes in life when all of us 
we get to a place of dryness in our spiritual life. You feel like you, did, you can't walk up in the morning and pray. You feel like you cannot walk up and read the word of God. Sometimes you feel like you don't need to go to church. Sometimes you feel you have no reason, you have no idea why you are feeling that way. Because in once a time in life, we come across this dryness in the spiritual life. And when a writer was in such a moment, he has made a big prophetic declaration in the land of Egypt, in the land of Israel. But the, the prophetic word he declared, he, he was part of the people that suffered the, the consequences of the prophetic word. And now the Lord is telling Elisha, Elisha, leave that place and go to a place that I, the Lord God, you are God, I am going to provide for you. And any time we stand calm in the presence of God, remember when the children of Israel, they are coming from the Egypt, and the Bible says on one side, they saw their enemies coming in a, with the chariots, with all manner of soldiers and, and all manner of whip, weapons, and they looked at Moses and said, Moses, why did you brought us for, to this land to die? It was better for us to die in Egypt because we have a place to be buried. Because in Egypt... The something that they valued so much was a place to be buried. Remember even when Wakati Musa, um, uh, Ibrahimu alipo, alipo, alipo toka Misri kumana hakuwa na mahali pa kuzika muke wake Sarah alipo aga. The Bible says he bought a tomb to bury his wife. Na hata wana wa Israeli walipo enda katika mikono ya, ya, ya maduizao kule Egypt. The first requirement was when they are coming from Egypt, they should carry the bones of Joseph and the bones of other Israelites who died in that place that they may be buried in the land of their fathers. Because in Israel, kitu kita ambacho kilikuwa cha dhamana sana ni mahali pa kuzikwa. Na sasa wana wa Israeli wanaangalia Musa na wambia, kwa nini ulitutoa? Mahali tungezikwa, unatureta jangwani tuangamie. Lakini mandiko nasoma, the Lord look at them and he spoke to them through Moses. Haka wambia, tell my people to stand still because the enemy they see today, they will never see them again. In the, in the season of darkness, we need to stay calm that we may allow God to fight for us. God does not fight with, for people when they are still in the battle. God does not fight for you when you are still struggling to make your way to fight for yourself. But God fights when we say it is all about you. When we say we cannot do without you. When we say, Lord, I surrender this battle to you. He is able to fight our battle because the Bible says he is the Lord God of hosts. And he said to Erika, stay calm. Because I'm going to command. I'm going to order. And one thing that I want you to understand with that story. The love is. Ni mnyama ambaye napena nyama sana. Ha? Huh? Anatoanga nyama mtu wakiwa meishika na mkono. Anaitoanga tako mdomo. But God used the animal that was a canvas. The, 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 the meat eater. Mungu wakaitumia. To fulfill the purpose. To feel the prophet, to feel the man of God, to feel the faithful man who was able to stay in the word of God, who was able to stay faithful, and who was able to stay calm, waiting upon the Lord. Because many times to me miss visitation, to me miss kutemera wana mungu. Because when God is about to come, we are busy listening to other voices. We are busy looking to other things. We are busy trying to work things around us to work. But God said to Elijah, stay calm. Don't mind about the rain. Don't mind about the dry season. But I, the Lord, I am going to direct. I love the NIV Bible because it's in And I have directed. In other words, even before God sent him to the, to the, to the cave, Tahari Mungu alikuwa mepeana order. Because God has power to speak to the nature. That's why the Bible says, in the beginning God created heaven and earth. And the, the earth was without form and the spirit of God was moving. And when God was creating everything that we see except the man, he was creating them by the power of his word. He was saying, let there be birds. 
Unaona bad zinakuja. Anasema let there be this kind of bird zinatoka zinazaliwa. Let there be this kind of animal zinazaliwa. But when he came to a man the Bible says he created a man with his own hands but his own image because man is more valued in the kingdom of God than any other creation. And our God said to Elijah, don't worry about the dry season. Don't worry about the famine. Don't worry about the things that are happening in the whole world. But I have already directed the new King James Version Nesema, I have commanded. In other words, it is an order that is given by God. And I've come to encourage somebody tonight. It doesn't matter the condition that you are in at this moment. But as you stay calm, stay in the word of God and stay faithful. God is able to command somebody. He's able to command somebody. He's able to command the situation that you are in at this moment. Because he's the same yesterday, today and forever. And he never changed in season. The things that he did in those old days, he's able to do them again. And number four, for you to be able to survive in the dry season, you must stay open. You must stay open. And Elijah was willing to be fed by the rabbit. Elijah was not there to go to complain with God. No, he had an excuse there. God, you know, God, a raven, it's, it's a meat eater. It can't get meat here. With God, you cannot bring me from that place to come and kill me here in the cave. He was not there to, to argue with God, but he stayed open. Whatever and whoever God is going to use in that season, he was ready to embrace. He was ready to receive. He was ready to cooperate. He was ready to listen to the voice of God. And I've come to chat to somebody tonight. Many at the time, God is about to do something. But God is looking for the heart, for the men and women, the people that can be open to God, the people that can stay open to allow God to manifest, the people that can allow God to move into their lives up. The people that can allow God to do a new thing up. Because he said, behold, and I'm coming to do the new thing up. He said, forget about the past. It doesn't matter whether yesterday was burning up. It doesn't matter whether yesterday was painful. But he said, I am coming to do a new thing. And the new thing can only be done when we stay open in the presence of God. When we allow God to move in our lives up. When we allow God to be the Lord of our, of our lives up. When we allow God to take charge of our lives. When we allow God to take control. Remember even when Jesus was going to the tomb. The Bible says he looked ahead and he saw the cup. The cup was so painful. The cup was full of blood. The cup was full of agony. But Jesus looked at the cup and he said, Lord, if it is my will, take the cup. But he stayed open for the will of God to be done and he said, let the will of God be done. And the Bible says, when he pronounced those words, two things happened in that place. There was an open heaven. And the two men appeared side to side to Jesus. One of them was called Moses and the other one was called Elijah. Moses was coming to, to fulfill the or, or to, 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 to identify or to identify himself with the power of law. And Elijah was coming to him as to identify himself as the miraculous God. And when those people stood, stood by side to side with Jesus, the Bible says this, the heaven opened and the voice came from heaven and said, this is my son in him. I am well pleased. Because Jesus was able to stay open to allow the will of God to happen. And I know there are people that are watching us today, this, uh, this afternoon. You might be going through that hard time. You might be going uh, surviving in the dry season. But I've come to tell you tonight, if you can be able to stake those four things that were the story of Elijah, which is our story this morning, that we can be able to survive in the dry season. 
even when the even when there is the slogan that is going all over Kenya that lower the, the the price commodity we can be able to survive even when the commodities are going higher because if we stay by the word if we stay in the word of God stay faithful stay calm and be open to allow God to do his will in our life he's able to take us through that season and I've come to encourage somebody tonight. You will go through that season and you will come strong. The Bible says the better gold, uh, the better and the precious gold go through fire. And when it go through the process of fire, it become it, it is ref, ref, uh, refreshing, it is refined. And on the other side, it become more of value because it has gone through the process of burning. And in the season of dryness, God wants us to be able to dip ourselves in the word of God. To stay faithful by the word of God and to stay calm. And above all, to stay open to allow him to manifest his power in our life. I want us to stand on our feet and make this prayer. For a minute of your time, I want you to lift up your voice and tell God, help me Lord to stay in your word. Because we can be able to conquer every situation by the word of God. The Bible says that Jesus was able to conquer the devil. Not by fasting. He had just come from fasting. But it is not by fasting that made him conquer the devil. But he was able to conquer the devil by the power of the word of God that was him. Was in him. Tell God to help you to stay calm in his word. Number two, tell, tell him to help you to stay faithful. Number three, tell him to, uh, to help you to stay calm. Even when the things come that want to bring you down, tell the Lord to help you to stay calm. Number four, to stay open in this season. Whatever that will happen, whatever voice, whatever decree, whatever instruction, that I may stay calm. Nisikuwe taken away by the season of lives. Nisikuwe taken away by the, the standard of this life. But I may be able to stay open. That whatever you will say, I will do. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you because of your word. Thank you, Father, because you have given your word in a clarity, in a voice, in a manner that you can understand. That a rider was able to survive in the dry season. Not by his power, not by his mighty, but he was able to follow the four steps. He was able to obey your word. He was able to stay faithful by your, by your word. He was able to stay calm and open to receive whatever you sent to him. Father, it is our prayer tonight uh, that you may help us, oh God, to stay calm in this season, to stay calm in this dry season, to stay calm, oh God, and root ourselves in your word. Uh, in the name of Jesus, help us to be faithful. Help us to be open, oh God, to receive from you, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, I am praying for that woman. I am praying for that man. I am praying for that young woman and that young man who is going through the dry season. It is my prayer. It is the same, same story that the writer was going through, oh God. I pray that you may help him, Lord, to stay closer to you by understanding and staying in your word and to be faithful in your law. In the name of Jesus. Masha kataya raba reproko zanda raba rekaya ramazande reproko zekete mahanda ramazaka rekataya raba help us to stay in your word help us to stay faithful help us to stay kamoga help us to stay open to receive from you it is our prayer it is our prayer as a church it is our prayer as a nation it is our prayer as the body of Christ that we may stay in your word in the name of Jesus even when the dry season comes we will stand strong we will conquer the battle we will conquer the giant we will conquer the circumstances because your word is superior into our lives Father we bless you Holy Spirit we give you praise we give you glory. Thank you for your word. Thank you for speaking to us tonight, oh God. Receive all the glory. Receive all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
Amen. Amen. We've come to an end of our what? Midweek service what? And I want to request those that are watching us, we are live uh, on our YouTube channel. You can just go there and subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sozo Ministries Juja. Make sure you watch and subscribe. Share this live stream. Be a blessing to that other person that is watching together with you. In Jesus' mighty name. I want us to give to the Lord as we make a final prayer. For those that are watching us, there is a number on the screen. You can give your, you can connect with that word. Because I said in such, in, in such a time in life, we come to uh, this time of dryness. Sometimes you feel like you don't want to do something. You feel like you don't want to pray. You feel like you just want to be there too. But God is able to help us to conquer that situation. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your people. Thank you for those that are giving online. Thank you for those that are watching us far and close. Lord, I pray, even as they connect with this word tonight and give their offering, Lord, I pray that you may bless the work of your, their hands. The Bible says the hand that given, it is the hand that receiven. I pray, Lord, as they stand and give, Lord, I pray that you will help them to give Go, to go through like Elijah in the season of dryness they will not be finished, they will not be destroyed, but they will come out strong and victorious because your word is power Lord I give you praise and I honor you as they give their offering Lord I pray that you may receive it as a sweet smelling aroma I give you praise and I honor you in Jesus mighty name Amen, and now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord increase you until you meet some other time. Shalom. Shalom. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you. You can greet two people and tell them God bless you.